Well, I think that's a pretty good explanation of database for me. And I think it would help the students. Okay. The other area that we wanted you to talk about in particular, since there's heavy emphasis in your program, is internet programming. Right. Um, once again, we have a common course in the first term that all the majors take. That's uh, internet programming, yeah. HTML. Can right. you ex tell us a little bit about that? The HTML course, uh, most students in high school either take an HTML course or they know somebody who has. It's, it's, a, it's a coding language where you mark up with tags uh, and if you want to see what it looks like, just right click on any web page and click on view source and you'll see this mess that comes up which is the HTML. And we teach you how to write HTML code to build web pages. It's very fundamental, but we use a software package called Visual Web Developer. It's a Microsoft product. It allows you to uh, say you say you start writing tags in the HTML uh, page. Uh, say you start a table. The table is a very common element in an HTML uh, page. If you type in table and hit the enter key, it'll put the closing tag for table right below that. It, it, it helps you out. It's a little intuitive. If you type in, oh, say you misspell table, you'll get a little squiggly line underneath it. It won't give you the closing tag. It'll say, I don't know what that is. It's like a word with a misspelled word. Uh, you look at it, you hover over it, and uh, I'm, I'm really happy Microsoft decided to do this. Their error codes now will tell you exactly what you did wrong. It'll say, I don't recognize this word. You may have misspelled it. Which is, which is really nice for Microsoft. They're not, you know, they're not good on their error reporting in the past. Uh, so it's very, uh, it, it's, it, it's helpful in that if you type in the table tag and hit the space bar, it'll give you a list of all the attributes that you can put on that table, the width, the, the background color, any of those things you can choose from that list, or if you type in an attribute, uh, and it doesn't know what it is. Either you misspelled it or you, you're using an old attribute that they really don't want you to use anymore. Again, you'll get the squiggly line. And you, anytime you have squiggly lines in your HTML code in Visual Web Developer, you're doing something it doesn't like. And sometimes it'll let you get away with it, and other times it's, you know, it's something that it completely doesn't understand and it, uh, and it actually won't work when you try to resolve the page on the Internet. Okay, you talked about other internet programming classes, ASP, JavaScript, XML. Right. right. Short little description about what happens in those. Um, ASP is what's called actually ASP Classic, which is the old, anytime you see a web page on the internet that has .asp, that's the old classic ASP. It was actually a little bit of competition between Microsoft and PHP programming. They tried to do all the same things that PHP did. Uh, they did okay. They really didn't succeed at it. But there's a lot of code out there that's written in ASP Classic. So we still teach the course because there's a lot of it out there. Uh, the JavaScript course is JavaScript. Every, you know, every web page that you see has a little JavaScript tucked in there somewhere. It allows you to do things on the web page uh, that, that classic HTML and even classic ASP won't let you do. Uh, so JavaScript's very popular, it's out there, and we, we, we teach a course in it. The XML is, best way to describe it is, it, it's HTML where you can actually make up your own tags. You can, you can, you can actually make up your own tags, and, and it's, very, it's very similar to HTML, and as, it's, it's like HTML times two. So when you, when you take an XML course, very similar to HTML, uh, just another step up. Okay, so we've talked about HTML and ASP and JavaScript and XML. Uh, what's PHP? PHP is one of the first languages that computer code that began, that, that, that took HTML to the next step. HTML uh, up until PHP was pretty much a static web page. Uh, PHP introduced the dynamic web page where you could manipulate what's going on in the web page based on decisions that were made uh, before the page was, was resolved on your screen. Uh, say you log in, 
um, it now knows your uh, ID, so it knows who you are by talking to the database, which is going to be a MySQL database typically. Uh, now that it knows who you are, when you after you've logged in and go to the next page, it says, welcome, Donald, or welcome, Paul. It now knows who you are, and that information was pasted onto the screen behind the scenes by the PHP code. It's very similar. In fact, when the students take the ASP Classic course and then take the PHP, I get the comments all the time, this is, this is a lot like Classic ASP, and vice versa. If you take the PHP first, then take the Classic, you know, I've seen this before. It's different. It's different enough to, you know, to, to warrant a, a different course, but it's so similar that it's almost like taking the course over again with a little bit of a twist. Final question. Uh, ASP.NET programming classes with C Sharp. What happens in those two courses? C Sharp pretty much is the state of the art right now in internet programming. Uh, if you start, if you look in the newspaper for programmers, you're going to see C, C Sharp pretty much everywhere. Visual Basic still there, it's still solid, but C Sharp is where the, is where the companies are leaning. Uh, ASP.NET is Active Server Page .NET Programming is a Microsoft technology where you write the HTML in the front, you write the C Sharp code in the back, uh, and then the C Sharp controls the HTML. Just like PHP controls the HTML, just like ASP Classic controls it, but it's just a different way of doing it. Uh, programs right now, when you're on the internet and you see ASPX as the extension on the web page, that's either a C-sharp or a VB.net program. And, the, and again, the, when you hover over something and it gives you a little gray pop-up that's kind of cute, that's probably Ajax, but it's all part of the ASP.net C-sharp VB family. Okay, well, that's our interview with Don Youngpeter, Program Chair, Computer Programming and Database Management. As we mentioned at the beginning in the first segment, what we wanted to uh, accomplish here was to learn a lot more about computer programming and database management, what's in that program, but also look at what databases are, what Internet programming is. Uh, both of those core areas are covered to some extent, greater or less, in business information systems and uh, software engineering technology. And in uh, our follow-up videos, we're going to talk to Steve Yelton and Bob Neilds and look closer at those two programs and also at a couple other uh, core technical areas like high-level languages. So that's it for now.